How's it going, folks? So today, Uber got itself into some major hot water because a huge amount of files, including emails, text messages, and other types of documents, were leaked to the media that show the company committing a bare minimum unethical or potentially illegal acts and practices under the laws of m multiple different countries in which they were operating in. Potentially in the future, as a result of this, we may be seeing massive, massive lawsuits in multiple different courts and in multiple different countries. And what this means to the future of Uber is unclear. But I'll tell you what, I wouldn't want to own their stock right now. So before we hop into it, I'm just going to remind everybody, please uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, the link to the article will be in the description. More than 124,000 confidential documents leaked to The Guardian. These files expose attempts to lobby U.S. President Joe Biden, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, and British Member of Parliament George Osborne. We even have French President Emmanuel Macron secretly aiding Uber's lobbying efforts in France, as text reveal. The company apparently used kill switches, or kill, a kill switch of some sort, to shut off the uh, technology, wipe them, during raids to stop police from seeing data. In fact, we have the former Uber CEO telling executives that, quote, violence guarantees success. Which is a very interesting comment. A leaked trove of confidential files has revealed the inside story of how the tech giant Uber flouted the laws, duped police, exploited violence against drivers, and secretly lobbied governments. The unprecedented leak to the Guardian of more than 124,000 documents, known as the Uber Files, lays bare the ethically questionable practices that fueled the company's transformation into one of Silicon Valley's most famous exports. The leak spans a five-year period when Uber was run by its co-founder, Travis Kalanick, who tried to force the cab hailing service into cities around the world, even if it meant breaching laws and taxi regulations. During the fierce global backlash, the data shows how Uber tried to shore up support by dis discreetly courting prime ministers, presidents, billionaires, oligarchs, and media barons. Given the fact that Uber has complete control over their own app, they can simply enable it in a certain city, regardless of whatever the regulations and laws or uh, the situation with, with taxis in that city are. They're not really paying any attention to that. They don't know, don't care, don't want to know. They're simply enabling it in different cities. And what we see here in this picture is some of the protests against in one exchange, Kalanick dismissed concerns from other executives that sending Uber drivers to a protest in France put them at risk of violence from angry opponents in the taxi industry. I think it's worth it, he shot back. Violence guarantees success. <laughs> Which, if the comment didn't sound bad at first, the context makes it far worse. And here we have Kalanick's very dry lawyer-produced statement from his spokesperson saying quote he never suggested that uber should take advantage of violence at the expense of driver safety and any suggestion he was involved in such activity would be completely false so this one's interesting the leak also contains text between kalanick and emmanuel macron who secretly helped the company in france when he was the economy minister allowing Uber frequent and direct access to him and his staff. 
Macron, the French president, appears to have gone to extraordinary lengths to help Uber, even telling the company that he had brokered a secret deal with its opponents in the French cabinet. A big part of the problem here is the fact that it's been putting the Uber drivers themselves in serious danger, as they were undoubtedly the targets of vicious assaults and sometimes murders by furious taxi drivers. And the cab hailing app in some countries found itself battling entrenched and monopolized taxi fleets with cozy relationships with city authorities. Uber often characterized its opponents in the regulated taxi markets as operating a cartel, which isn't incorrect, but you gotta ask yourself, is Uber not just another cartel attempting to infringe on the other's territory and take that territory for itself? To a large part in response to this, across the world, police transport authorities and regulatory agencies sought to clamp down on Uber. In some cities, officials downloaded the app and hailed rides so they could crack down on unlicensed taxi journeys, fining Uber drivers and impounding their cars. Uber offices in dozens of of countries were repeatedly raided by authorities. Could you imagine that? You sign up for the new Uber that just came out You know, oh, the new app came out, you know, in your city, and you sign up to be a driver. You go to pick someone up, and it's just some, like, some, like, cop. He tickets you, impounds your car. Man. So against this backdrop, Uber developed sophisticated methods to thwart law enforcement. One was known internally at Uber as a kill switch. When an Uber office was raided, executives of the company frantically sent out instructions to IT to cut off access to the company's main data systems, preventing authorities from gathering evidence. The leaked files suggest the technique signed off by Uber's lawyers was deployed at least 12 times during raids in France, the Netherlands, Belgium, India, Hungary, and Romania. With all this in mind, I think that Uber, the company, is in some serious trouble. For one thing, their position in the market is not especially secure. Their main competitor, Lyft, essentially offers the exact same service and for a similar price. So it's not as if they can rest on their laurels in their home markets. But they also have competition from the taxis, not so much when it comes to fares or how fast they get there or any sort of free market related competition. Rather, they have competition for who can out nepotism the other. Who can get in better with the local politicians and local authorities to authorize either taxis or Uber or ride sharing or both to operate in their jurisdiction. And oftentimes it's true that the taxi companies operate in a mafia like way. But as we're seeing based upon these texts and emails and other documents is that Uber too operates in that same sort of way. After all, if the, if the allegation is that taxi companies act in a cartel or mafia-esque way, why should it come to surprise, come to surprise to anybody that Uber is acting in that way? Uber, after all, at the end of the day, is just a taxi company. Anyway, thank you ladies and gentlemen, have a good one.